Well, good evening, Emmanuel Light of the World. I'm Pastor Rakia Wright. And um, on behalf of myself and uh, Pastor Chuck, we just want to welcome you all to Believer's Night. I know that we were supposed to be inside of the physical church location, um, but y'all, it's cold outside. It is cold. And uh, we wanted to make sure that all of our... Um, members were safe and um and making sure that we weren't putting anyone in harm's way okay so hopefully you are on your couch you have your bible you have your um journal whatever you're writing in um this evening um and then i also will be sending out a link so that you are able to grab hold of the lesson for tonight. Um, so if you're able to fill in the lesson for tonight as I'm going through it, um, feel free to do that. Actually, I encourage you to do that. This is gonna be an awesome, awesome um, message or lesson tonight. Um, as we've been talking about um, really um, maturing in, in the spirit, our spiritual disciplines and getting a grip on those things, um, we talked last week um, and as an introduction, and then we went a little bit into um, God's word and how to study God's word and all of those different things. And we're going to pick up and continue with that tonight. Um, and probably next week as well. There's a lot as it pertains to God's word. And we just want to make sure since we are building to last, that we are truly building with a good, strong, solid foundation. And what better way than to build with a solid foundation in the word of God? And so if you don't have a grip on the word of God and you've asked these questions, how do I study the word? How do I hear God in his word? How, how do I meditate upon the word? You know, these questions that are good questions, and these are questions that um, oftentimes a lot of us have, um, and those who may not have those questions, maybe it's not a, a discipline that you are actually practicing fully right now. So wherever you are in your journey or your walk with the Lord, prayerfully, this lesson will catapult you or push you um, further um, in this discipline. And so let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer as I'm praying. Um, make sure that you have all of your things and uh, ready for tonight's lesson um, and chime in on the live chat. Make sure that we know that you're with us, you're present. Find the live chat option at the bottom of this video um, and engage throughout the lesson. If something stands out to you, um, put it in the chat box, engage with the people on line today and make sure that you are turning to those scriptures, writing those scriptures down uh, tonight because we have quite a few. So let's go ahead uh, with the word of prayer. We'll get right into it. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, just another day, another opportunity that we're able to um, sit at your table. Like I always say, this is a table that you have prepared. You've prepared a meal for us and it's a good meal. It's a meal for full of the word of God, full of nutrients in the word of God. And we take it and receive it as that. We don't look at it as something that we've already received before, but we look at it as something that is fresh, something that is um, is able to transform our lives, is able to pull, push us and push us in um into the right direction um, to create these disciplines in our life. God, we are entering into this time with the mindset that we are building a life that will last. And Father, what better way than to start with the word of God? And so, God, we just ask that you would have your way, that you would um, just enlighten us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 So what I need for you to do is go ahead and hit the share button. Go ahead and share this link with friends, family, anybody who's come to you and asked you about how to study the word or asked you, you know, some different questions concerning um, the word of God. This is going to be good um, for them. So go ahead, take a moment and share the link with um, some friends and family, even those Emmanuel out of the world church members that you don't see online. 
mind right now, go ahead and send it to them so that they can um, join this time. All right. So tonight we are going to pick up where we left off last week. And tonight uh, we're going to talk about how to hear God's word, how to hear God's word. Y'all do know that you can hear God's word. You can hear God. Let's start there. You can hear God. And I know I've talked to many people, believers, even some in our own church that says, you know, I, I can't hear God. I don't know if I can hear God. How do you hear God? And so this is where you need to lean in. All right. How to hear God. One way is we hear God through the word of God. Um, the first scripture that I want us to look at is found in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And go ahead and jot that down. But it's a very familiar passage of scripture that says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so right there, it lets you know that you can hear God's word. You can hear God's word. And it starts there, but oftentimes this is where it ends. It ends at just hearing the word. I come to church on Sunday, I hear the word, right? I may turn on a YouTube uh, video, I hear the word, right? Um, but it goes further than that. But we're going to start right there. There are ways that we hear the word of God. We hear the word of God through um, just Bible uh, audio recordings of the word, right? We hear the word of God through church services. Um, like right now you are listening. And if you don't have your Bible and you don't have your journal in front of you, you're just hearing the word of God. We got to take it up a notch. We're building to last. So go ahead and grab what you need to grab. So you're not just hearing the word, but these are the ways we hear the word through sermons being preached. We hear the word through radio. If you listen to the radio and listen to the word there, podcasts, which is a big one. I love listening to podcasts, um, uh, TV evangelists, teachers, all of that. You're able to hear the word of God. But this is the problem. You're ready for it? This is the problem. We forget 95% of what we hear within 72 hours. Tell me what I preached on Sunday. If you ain't write notes, you have already forgotten what I preached on Sunday. So if you're taking notes and you have the handout, put this in the little box there. We forget 95% of what we hear within 72 hours. That Y'all, that should say something to us right there, all right? That should let us know that we either need to improve how we're hearing or we need to do something about this problem, okay? So hearing the word is not enough because we forget. <laughs> and it's not just because of older age. It's just simply because we forget if we're not taking it to the next step and actually writing it down. All right. So how do we improve our hearing? Let's start there before we get to writing things and all of that. Let's just talk about how do we improve our hearing? Number one is this, be ready and eager to hear God. Be honest. How many of us actually was like, oh, I'm ready for believers night tonight. Even though I wish we were in the building, right? But even though we're not in the building, I still, I'm ready. I got my drink. I got my popcorn or whatever you're eating. Maybe, are you eating right now? Yes, you are. All right. So, you know, I got all of these things and I am eager to hear what Pastor Ruki is going to present tonight. All right. So this is how we improve hearing. We've already failed in our hearing when we come to church and we're not eager to hear God's word. We're just coming out of routine or we turn on Bible study and we're doing a million and one other things. Whatever you're doing right now is not important, more important than hearing God's word. So settle yourself, sit down somewhere so that you can receive and hear and improve your hearing. So be ready and eager to hear. In Luke 8 and 8, it says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then Psalms 119 and 103, it says, how sweet are your words 
to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So this is, as I'm speaking the word of God, as I'm reading off these scriptures, it should literally be a sweet savor and it should be a sweet taste to your mouth. All right. So that's number one. Pretty simple, right? Let's amp up our eagerness every time we have an opportunity to receive the word that we're not dragging our feet into the house of the, of the Lord, but we are ready. I want to hear what God has given to Pastor Ruki, to Pastor Chuck, to Minister Mary as they deliver the word of God. I don't know who's delivered it this Sunday, but I am eager to hear the word of God because guess what? Whatever we present on Sunday, this is so special because God already knows who's going to be in the building and he has literally made and presented a meal just for you. And so that should take up our, our eagerness. Number two is this. We're talking about how to improve our hearing. Number two is this. Deal with attitudes that prevent hearing God. Yes, we can have some attitude, you know, that will prevent us from hearing God. All right. So I want to look, and I don't have the scripture written down all the way, but I'm going to turn here real quick. That's Luke 8, 4 through 15. Luke 8, 4 through 15. Let me turn there really, really quick. I want to read this. That's Luke 8. And y'all, we just came out of Luke. Luke 8, <laughs> 4 through 15. And it says, one day Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across his field, some fell on the footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Other seeds fell upon the rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seeds fell upon the thorns and grew up and it was choked out of tender, out the tender plants. Still other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew up and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as he had planted. When he had said this, he called out anyone who has ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. But I use parables to teach the others so that the scripture might be fulfilled. When they look, they, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't really understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. The seeds that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a little while, then they fall away when they are faced with temptation. Verse 14, the seed that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. And so they never grow to maturity. Amen. And so we have to deal with attitude that prevents hearing God. Luke 8 and 18 says this, a part of that says, consider carefully how you listen. All right. These are three ways. I'm going to give you three ways that we can listen and that we need to adjust our attitude that is preventing us from truly hearing. All right. And the first one is this, just simply this, a closed mind. You just have a closed mind, right? First of all, there's no eagerness, but the attitude is just a closed mind, right? It is fear, pride, or bitterness preventing me from hearing God. Fear, pride, or bitterness. I've already heard that before. I've, I've heard that scripture. I've read that scripture. I, I know what that means. This is, you know, you know, I've already heard. Do you know 
that you can read the Bible 150 times and still get something fresh and new out of it every single time. Why? Because it is alive. It is active, right? It is the word of God. So we can't have a closed mind when we are listening, hearing the word of God, just because you've read it before, or just because you've heard someone preach to preach the same passage before, you know, God can open up our eyes and allow us to see something that we did not see, right? So we cannot have fear. We cannot have pride. We cannot have bitterness. And that will prevent us from hearing God. The second one is this, a superficial mind, a superficial mind mine. You may ask the question, am I really serious about wanting to hear God speak? You know, it's just, am I really serious about wanting to hear God speak? It's just a superficial mind. You know, you know, I, I, I just, I hear the sermon, but I don't know if I really want to hear God speak. I mean, it sounds good. It sounds, you know, it's something that I can, you know, quote here and there, but do I really want to hear God speak? Am I serious about this? Right? So that's a superficial mind. And the third one is a preoccupied mind. Am I too busy and concerned with other things? That's your signal to sit down right now. That's your signal, right? Because you're going to miss something that God desires for you to see and hear in his word. But am I too busy or concerned about other things to concentrate on what God has to say? All right. That's a preoccupied mind. You could be in church and literally on your phone, texting, writing a grocery list, what you need to do, you know, and the word, the preach word, the, the, the meal that God has prepared for you is being presented and you can miss what God is saying because our attitude is not right. All right. So those are three types of minds that we can have which will prevent us from hearing the word of God, all right, or hearing correctly, all right? Number three is this, confess any sin in your life. This is how we're improving our hearing, confess any sin in our life, all right? Um, James, let's see, James 1 and 21, it says this, get rid of all moral filth and humbly accept the word, so that's telling us that there can be sin in our lives that's preventing us from hearing. We just have a closed mind because of the sin, right? Blinded eyes because of the sin in our lives. And then we're not, and we're trying to figure out what, I didn't really get nothing for, I didn't really hear what he was saying. I couldn't really apply that to my life. I, you know, or, or that went right over my head and someone else who's sitting next to you is hearing it and not just hearing it, but they are receiving it and it is touching their life. But we can be sitting under the same word and it could be preventing us from he truly hearing. Notice I didn't say listen, because we can listen to a lot of things, but hearing means that we're about to apply this to our life. That means that we've heard something that is we can you know, apply it, it's applicable, right, to our lives. And so we have to get rid of our moral filth, prepare ourselves to receive the word of God. If there's anything in which I've done to, to grieve you, Holy Spirit, I confess it, I repent, right? So that I'm able to receive the word of God. All right, so that's number three. Number four is this, take notes on what you hear. Here it is, take notes, take notes, right? We can be sitting in a sermon and I see some people who have their notebooks and they're jotting down, they're writing down, right? And nine times out of 10, those are the people that are retaining it. Those are the people that are able to regurgitate the word, let other people know what the word was, you know, for that for that week. Um, they're a, And they're even more likely to apply whatever God is speaking to them concerning the word. Why? Because they simply took it a notch above and they wrote down notes they wrote what they heard. They wrote notes on what they heard. Do you know God is speaking to us even right now? He's He's ministering and speaking to the hear to the to the to those who have ears to hear, right? He's bringing up things maybe that He's already you know um, spoken to you in your own personal walk and own personal life. He's encouraging you. He's giving you deeper revelation concerning things. 
He's um, opening up our eyes to something, question that we had or we asked him. You know, he's working, but that's if we have ears to hear. So take notes on what you hear. The scripture for that is found in Hebrews 2 and 1, and it says, we must pay more careful attention to what we've heard so that we do not drift away. So that careful attention is saying, I'm about to write down these details. This is too good. You know, I love when I get a chance to be able to sit and listen to Pastor Chuck and sit and listen to Minister Mary and Pastor Carolyn as they're delivering messages, because more than likely, either I'm taking notes on my phone or I have a notebook and I'm writing down scripture because I want to be able to go back that week and to be able to study it for myself and to be able to apply it to my life and the things that stood out. All right. Are y'all getting something? Y'all write it in the chat. Um, box right now. If you are receiving something tonight that's going to improve your hearing, that's going to truly improve your hearing. All right. So the next thing is this. Let's take it a little step further. Okay, let's take it a little step further to number five. I want to make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay, number five is this. How do we improve our hearing? Number five is this. Act on what you hear. Simple, right? No, it's not simple. How many of us really have acted on what I preach Sunday? Wait. How many of us have taken something and said, I'm going to, I'm going to apply this. I'm going to go a little bit deeper in this. God, I hear what you're saying concerning obedience. I, I'm reminded of the promises. I talked about the promises that, that Abraham um, had and, and the command that God had given to him and how he was right in the middle. He did not see how God was going to move and what God was going to do, but he trusted that he would, right? That was the faith part. You know, I think I, um, sent a message to one of you know the church members just about something that I'm personally going through where I was able to apply the scripture that I preach you know to the word because it's ministering to me as well the person who is delivering the message all right so we want to make sure that we're taking it we're applying it God where can I apply this where have I not seen your promises fulfilled where can I walk in greater obedience where can I walk in greater faith where are you pushing me where are you leading me in this what are you showing me even in this so there's always something that can be applied act on what you hear um James 1 and 22 says this do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. So it's saying, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers also. Y'all heard that. Don't be just hearers of the word, but be doers also. Everything that you take in from the word, it can be applied. It can be, uh, you know, open your eyes in some way and be applied to your life in some form or fashion. Things that are not applied, when we don't apply the word, it does not bring transformation to our lives and it does not bring maturity to our spiritual walk. We will remain, like I talked about last week, we will remain infants, remain babies because we have never truly applied the scripture to our life. Amen. Can y'all see the passion? <laughs> All right. James 1 and 25 says this, whoever does not simply listen and then forget, but puts it into practice, that person will be blessed in what he does. So there, there you go. There's a guaranteed blessing for 2024. Hey, he says, if you apply this word, you know, listen, you're going higher, right? You're building some stuff that will last, right? You will be blessed. You will be happy in this year, right? The word will not bring you to a place of, of, of you know, defeat. It's going to bring you to a place of victory. So he says, if you take the word and you hear it and not just hear it, but act on it, right? You're able to put it into practice and listen. It's going to bring transformation in your life. All right, we're going higher. All right, so how to read God's word, how to read God's word. All right, I want to look at um, 
Revelations 1 and 3. Revelations 1 and 3. And it says, happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what is written. So he says, happy, happy are you, blessed are you, right? Who, who actually reads this book and actually does what it says. All right. Um, so the question is, and you know, how often are we to read God's word? You know, and I think all of us can answer this question. But the question, <laughs> the real question is, do we do it? Like, are we actually engaging in the word of God? And this is the answer daily, every single day. There should not be a day that goes by without feeding yourself spiritually. There should not be a day that goes by. I'm talking about where we are actually reading the word, listening to the word, taking it a step further, writing notes upon the word and actually applying the word of God. So we're doing this daily. And if you're listening, you're saying, man, last year, I, I didn't, honestly, I didn't read the word daily. You know, I, maybe it was a few, you know, when I thought about it, let's make this a part of us, right? Of 2024, because we're building things in our lives to last. And so it will not last without the word of God. And so this is a daily consumption that we are engaging in every single day. That's why we put into place our 6 a.m. prayer time where we're not just praying. It's easy to just listen to someone pray, but we give you an opportunity to make this a practice to engage in the word of God. And we've given you a simple way to do that. And you may have your own way, do your own way, as long as we are meditating and thinking through the word of God daily. We're chewing on the word daily. All right. And we're applying it daily to our lives. All right. And even when this fast is done, make this a part of your practice. You may not get up at 6 a.m. when the fast is over, but find a time and stick with it for the year and apply these principles that we're doing <clears throat> um, during this fast every day of this year. Deuteronomy 17 and 19 says, the scriptures shall be his constant companion, right? That should be like your, this Bible, where's my, should be a, your bedside companion, right? It's right by your bed, right? It's walking with you. You know how we can't leave the house without this thing, right? We should not be able to leave the house without our word. The scripture says he must read from it every day of his life so that he will learn to respect the Lord, his God, by obeying all, somebody say all, of his commands, all right? Not just the ones that we think we ought to obey, but he says all of them, all right? So this is how we are to read God's word. I want to give us a few suggestions here. I want us to read the Bible systematically, all right, these are just a few suggestions. Read the Bible systematically. Right now, we are reading it. Um, we're reading all of Matthew, and we're just systematically going through the chapter by chapter, and we're just, we're reading it. How's everybody doing? Y'all put that in the chat box. How are y'all doing with y'all's reading? Because right now, I think we should be in John, I think. Um, John. Um, so how are y'all doing? How's it going? Um so we are, we're reading it. We're reading the Bible. So that's a suggestion. And I wanted us to model it and to do it at together as a family. So even when this fast is done, at least you can say, hey, I've gone through the New Testament and, you know, and continue. I mean, continue to read it. Um, sometimes I'll go through the New Testament four and five times a year, right? Just to read it. And I'll always discover something new because you're always dealing with different things at different seasons and the Lord has his way of, you know, revealing things in his word, you know, even things that you've read over and over before. So um, the second suggestion is this, re read the Bible, um, read the Bible um, without notes, read the Bible without notes, right? Just reading it. Another suggestion is read it in different translations, one of my favorite translations to listen to the Bible, because it's so hilarious, it's so funny, 
and it just keeps me so engaged is the message Bible. If you're listening to the Bible right now and it's not the message version, I want y'all to, you know, switch it up a little bit with your um, translations. I also like the, I just started liking the Phillips translation as well. It's real and it's a good translation to actually listen to. I don't know if I would listen, just sit and listen to the King James version. I mean, I'll read it, but there's favorite. I like to preach from the NLT version, version um, New Living Translation, but I would encourage you to look at some different, you know, translations of the Bible. The Good News Translation is a good one, and the Living Bible is a good one as well. Um, another suggestion is read it aloud quietly to yourself. It's something different when it's one thing to just hear it. It's another thing to to actually you know, read it and look at it and, look, you know, read it in your head. But it's a whole nother thing when you're actually reading it and you're speaking every word, you know, with passion, right? Um, it just takes it up a notch. Another suggestion would be to underline and color code your key verses. Um, if you have one of those Bibles, you like, I, I have a Bible that I like to highlight. I like to write through. I do not have some Bibles that I don't write in at all because it's just so pretty. But um, if you have a Bible that you can highlight, I would even make it interesting. Make your Bible study interesting. I have my little um, jar here of all my colored pens and all of that, that when I get ready to study the Bible, I can, you know, use different color codes and um, highlight the verses um, I also have a journal. Um, and by the way, this is just a quick plug. I am releasing my second journal, hopefully sometime in February. Um, it's a Bible study journal, so it's going to help um, help you all to be able to um, organize your study time in this journal. So I hope you guys would support me on this release that's coming very soon. I'm excited. All right. And then uh, choose a reading plan and stick with it. I like to use reading plans sometimes as well. And that, this is what we're using for our New Testament. We're doing 10 chapters a day, maybe eight some days, but this is our re reading plan and we're just sticking with it and we're encouraging one another. So even when this is said and done, find another reading plan or a Bible study plan that you can do that would help you as well. All right. Um, watch this. If you read approximately 15 minutes a day systematically through the Bible, you can read through the entire Bible in one year. All right. More than likely, we're going to read through the Bible in a year. Right now, we've already going to knock out New Testament, and then we'll systematically go through Old Testament in, in chunks and pieces. Um, so by the end of the year, we are done with the entire Bible. That's my goal here. All right. So hopefully that's um, some good pointers and good suggestions that if you're not already applying it, that you can actually apply. All right. So let's look at how we study God's word really quickly. Are y'all getting something tonight in this? All right. Awesome. So we have just a little bit more to go, but i um, just going to talk about how to study God's word. Um, Acts 17 and 11 it says they accepted the message eagerly and studied the scriptures every day, every day. So they didn't just read the scriptures. They studied the scriptures. But if you're going to read the scriptures, read the scriptures. That means you're going deeper, deeper, deeper in the word. Um, <laughs> uh, Pastor Chuck and I, our friend, he always says to his church, you know, if you're going to read, you know, we don't read the, the scriptures. We read the Bible. We don't read the Bible. We read the Bible, right? So we want to be readers of the Bible. Um, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says this, be a good workman. Know what his word says and means. All right, we're students. We want to know what we believe. We want to know what the word says. You may not know all the books and the chapters. Sometimes I'm like, I know this verse, but I don't know where it's found. <laughs> I got to go back and refresh my memory. Um, but um, we want to know what it says and more, than, more importantly, what it means. All right. The difference between reading and studying the Bible, there's a difference between reading and studying the Bible. 
And it's simple. Take notes. That's the difference. The only difference between reading and studying the Bible is that when you study, you're taking notes. When you're reading, you're just reading. And more than likely, 95%, right, it's lost in the 72 hours. And so we want to read and we also want to take notes when we study. All right. So let's be, you know, note takers, right? I know I love journals, but I know maybe y'all don't walk around with a notepad or whatever, but get one. Keep your notes together. Keep them housed together because this is how God works. You'll write down a, a scripture. You study it out. You write down what the Lord is speaking. And then God brings that situation or brings you to a place where you need to go back and get that word. And now you're not saying, oh, I read that. I, I forgot. You know, No, but you got your notes, right? You have your in-depth notes so you know what it means and you know how to apply it to your life. So take notes. And then the secret of effective Bible study is knowing how to ask the right questions. In order to be a good student of the word, we got to ask questions. Simply, simply put, you know, even when I'm formulating my sermons, um, I'm asking questions. What are the questions that the people would have? As I'm going through the message, what are the questions that 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 come off of this passage that maybe the members would have that relates to their life, right? So we ask questions and then we discover the answer. And nine times out of 10, when you're studying a passage of scripture, you can find the answer within the passage, all right? If you're studying just a one verse or one, you know, one verse here, um, read 10 verses ahead and 10 verses below it. Don't just read it in isolation or study it in isolation, kind of like what we do in the morning because we don't have time to actually go study the whole passage that the scripture is found in. But during that quiet time that you have, you might, you know, go and read some verses ahead and some verses below just to get an understanding of what it is that you are reading. And it may answer some of the questions that you have could be answered within the passage. And so you discover you're having these questions and then you're asking. And in, in Bible study, no question is a, is a dumb question. So actually you want to ask the dumb questions that you think is, it might be dumb or this is obvious. No, it's not obvious because the Bible is full of metaphors, is full of um, uh, poetic writings that you can think that something means something, but if you don't actually read the context you know, read it within context and have a proper understanding of that word, you can get the interpretation of it very wrong. And so you want to ask questions and ask, and no, no question is a dumb one. Let me just say that. All right. Awesome. 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 Are y'all getting this today? All right. So we learned the secret here. All right. So I'm just going to end with this, just a few suggestions um, to help in your Bible study. Now we have some more to go. So next week, we're going to take it a little bit further, but I want you to just take these concepts and whatever you are not currently applying to your life, apply it. All right. Remember, we're building. We are preparing. We're becoming more mature. We're growing up in areas. There's always, there's no cap in this spiritual journey. You have never arrived. There's always another place that God is taking you. Right. And he uses these methods to take us there. Hallelujah. All right. So I want to say this and just give you a few suggestions. And these are in your notes and I'm just going to read them off. But these are a few suggestions that I want to um, share with you, because maybe you can order it off Amazon or uh, pick it up from your local bookstore. Um, but these will help your study because I've had people ask me, well, what do I use to study? All I have is one Bible. And so these, this is it. So this is your question. These are some source resources for you. Um, one resource is Dynamic Bible Study Methods by Rick Warren. And basically he gives 12 different methods um, and he explains step-by-step -step on how to actually study and using that method. My Bible study journal that's coming out in February, um, it will... It, it uses the structure of an inductive Bible study. 
And so I'll explain what that is when we get closer to the release date of that, but um, it will help you in organizing your study. All right. Uh, study Bibles. These are a few study Bibles that I would recommend. The best um, personal study Bible is the Life Application Bible. Y'all put in the chat box if y'all have a life application. Um, my husband and I just purchased um, a study Bible for his mom for her birthday, um, but the Life Application Bible study. Um, but if you have it, go ahead and put it in the chat box. The next one that's best for background, if you want to get some background information, because that's always good to have an understanding of what happened in history as you're studying. You know, we don't want to just go in with the mindset of our today's culture because the Bible was not written in our culture today. So we can't go into the Bible from our own perspective of what, you know, the life that we're living in right now, the culture that we're in right now. But we have to have an understanding of the background, what was happening during that time. And so this Bible, the NIV study Bible, kind of gives us a breakdown of background and historic information to help us understand where um, the writers are coming from and what they were dealing with during the time of writing. All right. A lot of the times we're reading, especially in the New Testament in Paul's writing, they, the church was under great persecution. So that gives you a whole different perspective of as you're reading, like they weren't just sitting at the church, you know, having a, a you know, a good old, good old, you know, fellowship, good old time. They were being heavily persecuted, right, um, for for the gospel. And so, um, you know, as we read from this this type of study Bible, it helps to bring that to life. And then the best doctrine study Bible, because um, we want to understand doctrine um, and theology, the study of God, um, is the disciple study Bible. And so this gives us a little bit of more of the doctrine of Christ and the doctrine of the Holy Spirit and, you know, other doctor doctrinal um, references throughout the Bible. OK, and then Bible handbooks. So these are some um, companions to the Bible, to your Bible study that you can also use. And one of them is called Richard's Complete Handbook. That's a good one. And Haley's Bible Handbook. That is also a good one. Another resource that is one of mine and Pastor Chuck's favorite resources is this Tony Evans um, Commentary Bible. And so we love a good commentary and everything, but the Tony Evans uh, Commentary Bible really breaks down the passages and gives us greater understanding and in-depth understanding of what we're reading. All right. And then a few websites that I like to use in my study um, is the Blue Letter Bible. That's www.blueletterbible.com. And you can go there and, and it'll, it'll help you with different parts of study. And so that's something you don't have to purchase. It's free. Um, and then the last one that I like to use, which gives us a lot of different translations, and I love to look at all the different translations for whatever I'm studying, is the biblehub.com, biblehub.com. All right. So those are just a few suggestions and things um, to be able to help in aiding in your study. Y'all, let's not take this lightly. This is this is what's going to bring us up a notch. This is what's going to um, bring us to a place of maturity where we will be teachers of the word. And if you're already a teacher taking that that study and that teaching to a totally different level. And you might be saying, I'm not on the pulpit. I'm not teaching nobody. You don't know who God is going to bring to you to disciple. Remember in our church, we say our goal is every member is a minister. And so we, in order to be a minister, we got to be equipped with something, right? To be able to teach others. And so God is calling you higher this year. Why? Because he's building you to last. He's building every part of your life to last. And what better way than to start with a good foundation with the word of God? All right. So next week, we're going to take it a little step further with our, with our getting a grip on the Bible and studying the Bible. And we're going to talk about next week, how to memorize the word. I'm going to challenge you next week in scripture memorization, right? And being able to, and if it will aid your prayer life, it will aid your study, it will aid your life, period, right? It will aid your witness, all of that. And so we're going to talk about 
um, meditation and different things like that. And just even how to how to apply the word of God. Right. So this is going to be good next week as well. All right, you guys, if y'all enjoyed tonight's Bible study, tonight's Believer's Night, can y'all put that in the chat box really quick and say, yes, I enjoyed it. I received something. Go ahead and type it in the chat box um, at this time. Amen. Um, I do want to give you an opportunity to be able to sow tonight. Even though we're not in the physical church location, I want to give you an opportunity to be able to sow into what God is doing in Emmanuel Light of the World. And so there are a few ways that you can give. I believe that every opportunity that we have to receive the word of God, that we need to be sowing into the word of God and sowing into the house. Amen. Even if it's an offering, if it's not your night to, to tithe, maybe you have an offering that you want to release into the Lord and put in the ground tonight. And so this is the way that you can give. You can visit our website at ELOTW dot com forward slash give and you can give in that way or you can visit um cash app which is the cash app application and our handle is money symbol e-l-o-t-w 5415 either way that you choose to give tonight we are just so extremely grateful for your generosity not just your generosity but your consistent generosity that makes a world of difference in what god is, is leading us and having us to do in this season Amen. All right. So as you all are giving, I just want to pray over this word that you've received, that it will not be snatched up and it will not be lost in the next 72 hours, um, but that it would take root and that your seed is blessed on tonight. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for um, each and every disciple that is gathered on this call tonight, Father God. We thank you that they have an eagerness. Um, they had an eagerness to receive your word today. And because they did, God, they this word is not falling on hardened hearts, but God, tender and receptive soil. Father God, I thank you that this word, Lord God, would not just go through one ear and out the other. But God, I thank you that this word has penetrated our hearts, that you have revealed to us the areas, God, that we can grow stronger in the areas, Lord God, where we can truly build um, a life of study that will last this entire year. Father, we want to be students of the word. We want to be doers of the word. And so, Father, help us to be, become stronger in that, oh, Heavenly Father. Wherever we are currently, God, just Push us to take it up a little bit in the name of Jesus. May you open doors for us, Lord God, not to just retain the word, but open doors for us to be able to preach the word. For you have called each and every person who is listening to me speak and pray right now. You have called them to be ministers, to be reconcilers of the faith, of, of their relationship um, with others to you. So Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're equipping us right now with the word of God. May we go deeper in you this year. Bless the seeds that has been sown on tonight. And I pray, Father God, that it would bring forth a great harvest in their life. Father, we thank you that you are keeping us safe and covered under the blood of Jesus. Give us the strength as we endure in these next few days, Lord God, of this 21 day fast. We bless you. May we meet you and see you like we have never seen you before in the scriptures. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, praise God, Emmanuel. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, Pastor Chuck and I, we love you and we're so blessed to call you uh, co-laborers in this ministry. We love you so much. You all have a blessed night. Stay warm and we'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.